and getting so large that it will engulf the orbit of Mercury and Venus and come very close to Earth. So imagine looking on the horizon and sunrise is half the sky. The star Betelgeuse is so large, if you swapped it with the Sun, it would engulf the orbit of Mars and extend all the way through the asteroid belt. No need to panic, but at 700 light years, it's the closest star to the Sun that will end its life in a supernova explosion. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Betelgeuse, one of the brightest stars in the night sky, has a beautiful orange-red color. It's also known for its variability, meaning that its brightness can change over time. In fact, Betelgeuse can sometimes become so bright that it rivals even the brightest stars in the sky, reaching a magnitude of almost 0, 0.0. It has been said that the Betelgeuse has exploded and we are in it for a great terrifying experience. But is this really true? Let's look into the current situation of this beautiful sun-like structure. It is essential to know that the brightness of a star can vary greatly. Take, for instance, Rigel and Aldebaran. These are two stars that can have vastly different levels of brightness. At its brightest, Aldebaran can be as bright as Rigel, but at its dimmest, it can be comparable to Aldebaran. This variation in brightness is due to a number of factors, including the star's size, temperature, and distance from Earth. The period in question lasted for a little over five years and was characterized by significant challenges and difficulties. Some of the other variants include Belageuse, Betelgeuse, and Betelgeuse. It's fascinating how the same celestial object can have multiple names and spellings. The origin of the word can be traced back to the Arabic language. According to scholars, the use ending is considered the most appropriate for the given context. However, as Arabic is not my area of expertise, I am unable to provide any further insights on the matter. Betelgeuse is a red supergiant star located in the constellation Orion, approximately 642.5 light-years away from Earth. Its distance from us makes it one of the most studied and fascinating stars in the night sky. The Hipparchos Astrometric Satellite has provided us with valuable information about the distance of celestial objects. Based on its data, it has been determined that the distance to this particular object is approximately 430 light-years away. This information helps us better understand the vastness of our universe and the incredible distances between celestial bodies. Its apparent magnitude varies from 0.0, .0 to 1.6, making it a variable star. Alpha Orionis is the Bayer designation for the second brightest star in Orion, which is Rigel. Betelgeuse can sometimes be brighter than Rigel due to its unpredictability. Betelgeuse became known as Alpha Orionis and Rigel as Beta Orionis with the publication of Johann Bayer's Uranometria in 1603. Betelgeuse is a standalone star that is not part of any larger astronomical group. Since it is not located in a zone where new stars are being formed, it is also classified as a runaway star. The radius of Betelgeuse is around 764 times that of the Sun, and its mass is about 16.5 times that of the Sun. It is a red giant with a brightness of 126,000 suns. Because of this, its brightness as viewed from Earth remains high despite its distance of 548 light years. The star is cooler than the sun, 5,778 Kelvin, despite its massive size, as its surface temperature is only 3,600 Kelvin. Betelgeuse is just roughly 10 million years old, while the sun is 4.6 billion years old. Betelgeuse, despite being significantly younger, is a fully developed star. Without a doubt, a supernova explosion a few tens of light years from Earth would have very devastating repercussions. A truly massive explosion can produce light equivalent to a whole galaxy, so if one of our close neighbors, like Alpha Centauri, decided to act in this manner, we couldn't ignore it. It wouldn't matter if it shone as brightly as the moon because it would be bathing us in radiation of all kinds, but it would. Since 1604, we have not observed a supernova in our galaxy. Nevertheless, in 1987, one erupted in the large cloud of Magellan, with effects that could be clearly seen even at a distance of 169,000 light-years. 
G292.0 plus 1.8 supernova remnants are the remnants left behind when stars explode as supernovae. This one is an uncommon variety with a lot of oxygen. Although there was no risk, it is fortunate that the large cloud is so far away. The danger zone around a typical supernova is an interesting concept to work with. Now it would be somewhere around 100 light years. But as I am a selenographer rather than an astrophysicist, I could very well have estimated it incorrectly. Alpha Centauri is still within range, whereas Betelgeuse would be out of range in any event, it seems safe to state. Now, all this still doesn't answer the most important question, has the Betelgeuse really exploded? The red supergiant star that is closest to Earth is Betelgeuse. It will eventually explode, but when? Betelgeuse started dimming substantially in late 2019, which caused excitement all around the world. Some people thought the major event was about to happen because of the peculiar Betelgeuse dimming. However, Betelgeuse has not yet erupted. Since then, this prominent star in Orion Hunter's constellation has recovered brightness, dimmed, brightened, and appears to be now transitioning back to a less active condition. However, it is obvious that more dimming could occur at any time. The hunter's right shoulder is easily distinguished since it is marked by the second brightest star in Orion. Betelgeuse radiates a crimson tinge. It is well located for viewing in the first few months of every year in the evening sky. Astronomers have determined, after examining data from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope and a number of other observatories, that the bright red supergiant star Betelgeuse physically blew its top in 2019. Betelgeuse created a massive surface mass ejection, SME, and lost a significant portion of its visible surface. This is a behavior in a star that has never before been observed. A coronal mass ejection, CME, which occurs frequently on our sun, is a process wherein a portion of the sun's flimsy outer atmosphere, the corona, is blown away. However, the Betelgeuse SME ejected 400 billion times more mass than an average CME. Therefore, it appears that a cloud of hot gas that the star released and temporarily covered some of the star's light was what produced the odd darkening of Betelgeuse. Although some estimates place it farther away, Betelgeuse may be as nearby as 724 light years from Earth. Determining the distances of red supergiant stars like Betelgeuse is a challenging subject in astronomy. Despite being far away, Betelgeuse is one of the brightest stars in the sky due to its inherent brilliance. It is around 100,000 times brighter than the sun. Such brilliance has a cost because Betelgeuse's immense energy soon depletes its fuel, hastening the end of its existence. The star will eventually run out of fuel, collapse under its own weight, and then explode spectacularly as a supernova. Betelgeuse will then become extremely bright for a few weeks or months, maybe matching the brightness of the full moon and becoming visible in the daytime. Why Betelgeuse became dimmer in 2019 The Betelgeuse star experienced alterations in late 2019, becoming notably dimmer. Its apparent magnitude went from 0.5 to 1.7. Early in 2020, the red supergiant began to restore its brightness, putting an end to this decline. Some individuals believed that the star might be set to erupt as a result of this unexplained occurrence. The VLT was utilized by astronomer Miguel Montage and his team to determine why this occurred with Betelgeuse. They claim there are two explanations for this. The enormous convective cells of the star produced hot and cold areas on its surface, which was the first explanation. The huge dimming episode was also caused by a cloud of dust that obscured the starlight from our perspective. This cloud was also created by Betelgeuse. It is still unclear exactly when Betelgeuse will erupt. On the other hand, the supernova explosion would be visible on Earth even during the daytime because it is rather close to us in terms of stellar distance. Fortunately, because Earth is more than 500 light-years away, this massive explosion of matter won't have any impact on us. Astrophysicists estimate that for a supernova to have any impact on Earth, it would need to be about 50 light-years away. The red hypergiant V.Y. Canis Majoris displayed excellent dimming episodes in 2021, just like Betelgeuse. The explanation for this, according to NASA's Hubble Space Telescope, was similar to Betelgeuse's fading. 
but it was just taking place on a far larger scale. What time will it go off? Most likely it won't occur during our lifetimes. However, nobody actually knows when it will blow up. It might occur today or in a million years. Betelgeuse is nearing the end of its life cycle and could blow up at any point in the next 100,000 years. But because it has drastically dimmed during the past few months, it has drawn a lot of attention. Betelgeuse pulsates, and it has done this before. Therefore, it is not unexpected that it has diminished. But this specific fading has turned out to be unique. Betelgeuse is one of the brightest stars in the sky, shining at a magnitude of 0.69 and ranking 11th among the brightest stars. However, most recent estimates indicate that it has diminished to about magnitude 1.7, removing it from the top 21. Betelgeuse has consequently grown unusually dim. Betelgeuse's bizarre fading has been discussed in the media, with theories abounding that it may be a sign that the star is poised to explode as a supernova. Most professional astronomers and astrophysicists, however, do not accept this theory and think that the star will eventually return to normal since the current dimming is caused by other sources, such as an explosion of gas or dust or variations in the brightness of the star's surface. Therefore, even though Betelgeuse is set to disintegrate eventually, the scientific community agrees, not anytime soon. Let's assume, what would happen if Betelgeuse eventually popped? What would we see and feel from here on Earth? In the years 1006, 1054, and 1572, the three brightest supernovae ever seen in our skies first appeared. Each of these stars was either as brilliant as Venus at its brightest, or was on par with it. They were all, however, thousands of light years apart. Betelgeuse, however, is just 640 light years distant. This means that if the star were to explode suddenly, it would become extremely bright, maybe approaching the brightness of the full moon and produce distinct shadows. Even though the brightness of the daytime sky, it would be easily apparent. In the following years, where we once saw Betelgeuse, we might only see a diffuse patch of faint light. That would be the intensely hot, newly revealed core of the star, surrounded by an expanding cloud of gaseous debris. It would initially appear at this dazzling brightness for two or three months, then over the course of the following two or three years, it would gradually fade from view. If there were no other repercussions on our planet, that would be the extent of the explosion overall. Betelgeuse is lucky to be where it is in relation to us and not closer than, say, Capella, a very bright yellowish star that crosses high overhead in the middle of the evening. The distance is only 43 light years. Pop Culture, History, and Mythology of the Betelgeuse Arabic is the language that gave rise to the naming of many prominent stars. This fact is illustrative of the preeminent position held by Arabic astronomers and astrologers during Europe's Dark Ages. The term Betelgeuse comes from an Arabic phrase that is typically rendered in English as the armpit of the giant. This phrase is where the name Betelgeuse originates. Some scholars believe that Betelgeuse is meant to be seen as a hand or even a shoulder at times. This is in contrast to the common interpretation that the giant relates to Orion. Betelgeuse is the name of the star that appears on the right shoulder of Orion on many older star maps. The meaning of the name is not totally understood. It is not unexpected that the majority of portrayals of Betelgeuse have an anatomical relationship because Orion is most commonly associated with a giant, a warrior, a hunter, a god, or some other anthropomorphic or animal figure in the ancient stories. Even though it was most likely the leg of a stag, the Sanskrit term for this structure also referred to it as an arm, for instance. In some regions of Brazil, the constellation Betelgeuse was seen as the front leg of a turtle or the back leg of a caiman, a species of crocodile. Betelgeuse, on the other hand, was thought to be an integral component of the circumference of the rim of a ceremonial drum in ancient Japan. Betelgeuse represents an amputated limb of a man figure, Orion, in the Americas. The Taulipang of Brazil refers to the constellation as Zilil Kawai, a hero whose leg was amputated by his wife with the varied brightness of Betelgeuse associated with the amputation. The Lakota people of North America saw it similarly, as a chief with a severed arm. Betelgeuse is referred to as the Moist One in Sanskrit, which is also the name of the Hindu astrology's Ardra Lunar House. 
The star was ruled by the Rigvedic storm god Rudra, whose association with Orion's stormy temperament was made by 19th-century astronomy enthusiast Richard Hinckley Allen. In Macedonian tradition, constellations symbolized domesticated animals and farmland, representing the manner of life in the villages. Betelgeuse, along with the remainder of Orion, which showed a plow drawn by oxen, was known to them as Orak, the plowman. In the late summer and early fall, the rising of Betelgeuse at about three in the morning signaled the time for village men to proceed to the fields and plow. For the Inuit, the beginning of spring and the lengthening days in late February and early March were signaled by Betelgeuse and Bellatrix, rising high in the southern sky after sunset. People from North Baffin Island and the Melville Peninsula in particular referred to the two stars as those two, placed far apart, or those two placed, because of their distance from one another. Ancient societies all around the world took note of the opposing positions of Orion and Scorpius, as well as the bright red variable stars Betelgeuse and Antares that correlate to them. Orion's setting and Scorpius rising represent Orion's demise at the hands of the Scorpion. They stand for the opposing brothers, Shen and Shang, in Chinese culture. The first new moon following Orion's belt's descent below the horizon, while Betelgeuse was still like the tail of a rooster, was observed by the Batak of Sumatra as the start of the new year. Betelgeuse and Antares's placements at either end of the celestial sphere were thought to be significant, and their constellations were interpreted as a pair of scorpions and scorpion days designated as nights with visibility for both constellations. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure also to give this video a like and subscribe to this channel.